Thank you, Dr. Nurse. It's always hard to hear your obituary. Good evening. I am profoundly honored to be here to celebrate the award of the second annual Pearl Meister Green Guard Prize to Dr. Philippa, I hope I pronounce these names right, Merrick, and to salute the great Nobel winner, Dr. Paul Greengard, who created this major scientific award as a magnificent tribute to his mother, no greater love. This prize has special meaning for women who are making their mark in science after a long struggle and lighting the way as role models for other women. Women in the sciences will gain much recognition from this award after their long struggle so take that, Harvard's Larry Summers. <laughs> I don't think there's any woman in this room who has not known discrimination and who has not known the long struggle for recognition. Dr. Merrick's research on T cells, her work as head of the Division of Basic Immunology at the National Jewish and Medical Research Center has taken us to new heights in medicine. In collaboration with her husband, she isolated the T cells and discovered the extremely potent stimulators of the immune system responsible for toxic shock syndrome, food poisoning, and other illnesses. Her awards and honors are countless, but this one is golden because it has so much meaning. Anyone who does devotes her life or his life to saving lives has certainly earned the gratitude of all mankind. Science, like music, is universal for everyone. Unfortunately, these days, we are spending our youth and national treasury in a mindless, costly war that few can defend. And I say, cry, the beloved country. I've been told to inject myself in this story. Great, my ego swelled. But I do stand in awe of Dr. Merrick, and yet I know that she has trod the same path of women in most of the professions that have not been welcoming to us in the past. To know where I'm coming from, I'm still outraged that we didn't get the vote until 1920. I'm a suffragist. Thanks a lot, Founding Fathers. <laughs> but we can't, we can't look back in anger. There are too many more mountains to climb. I must say that I've been surprised to learn that there is so much discrimination in academia. Newsrooms, yes, of course, but in the great institutions of higher learning, the intellectuals, surely not. But yes, indeed, the battle for equality is not over, but women have come a long way. At the White House the other day, uh, Ann Compton with the ABC staff told me that the whole staff now is women, and the woman behind, sitting behind her with CNN said, our staff is all women too. I came to Washington during World War II, determined to be a reporter, and my immigrant parents believed so much in education. Nine children put them all through college. Above all, they believed in education, but they never told me that it was a man's world. In the job hunt, I went knocking on doors at the National Press Building with Liz Carpenter, who later became, she had just graduated from the University of Texas, and she later, later became a great Texas newspaper woman, and then press secretary to Lady Bird Johnson. She was uh, in the, in, magnificent, really, in the job. Liz was always on the plump side at that time. Who wasn't? And uh, she ran out of money a couple of days before I did, and she wired her brother, please send me $200, or I'm going to have to sell my body. <laughs> he wired back, sell it by the pound. <laughs> but, but he sent the money. I've always felt greatly privileged to cover the White House, watching presidents with their highs and lows, wondering whether they really understood the 
the power they have to do good, and so many times falling short. As a newswoman, I, we had to break down all the doors in, in Washington. We were barred from going to the National Press Club, the Society of Professional Journalists. All of the clubs kept us out, and they were all male. We didn't get into the National Press Club till 1971, when the scales began to fall from their eyes. And once we got in, I think every woman has found out that all of these clubs, the men really wondered, what was all the shouting about? Why did we, you know, why were we so prejudiced? And I remember covering Jimmy Carter in Plains, Georgia, one Sunday when he was teaching Sunday school to an all male segregated Sunday school class. And a big bur I was in the pool with, with two other reporters who were male and a big burly Baptist tried to bar me from going into the, because it was an all-male class. And I, when I said, I assured him, I said, I'm not a woman, I'm a reporter. <laughs> and, and he let me in. I received an honorary degree several years ago from Wittenberg College. And in the same ceremony, a and an honorary degree was presented to Dr. Gertrude Elian, Nobel Prize winner in 1988, and it was uh, presented to her posthumously and received by her nephew. He told me a wonderful story. He said that when she was informed that she was to receive the degree, the Nobel, or the degree before she died uh, at the age of 90, she had been informed and was very pleased. And it seemed that uh, she had never married, but she was very, very close to her family and all to the nieces and nephews, great nieces and great nephews. And when she learned that she had received the Nobel and, and also was invited to Oslo, she cabled her acceptance and said, fine, we'll all be there. And she listed all the children. Nobel came back, committee came back to her and said, no children. The American children are so obstreperous, we don't want them. <laughs> and she cabled back, no children, no Gertrude. And they changed their minds and invited the whole family. And she has a lot of pictures. They had brought a lot of pictures back of little children holding the hands of the queen. I do believe that we journalists have something in common with the search with scientists, and that is the search for truth, ours to reason why. I also know that truth is hard to come by, especially when you have a secretive administration, which most of them are. But both our roles are indispensable. You cannot have a democracy without an informed people. As a federal judge said, when uh, the New York, the Detroit newspapers uh, sued uh, to be able to cover deportation hearings when they were grabbing every dark skinned person off the streets after 9-11, he said, democracy dies behind closed doors. Democracy dies behind closed doors. I want to thank Dr. Greengard and his wife and the famous sculpturist. Ursula von Rodenvard for establishing this prize, and Rockefeller University Selection Jury, and Dr. Marriott for, for permitting me to join you in this memorable ceremony. I know I'm a fish out of water in this case. Thank you. <laughs>